moving. Uh, we got some more people in here. Once again, just enter your name and the RSO that you're re representing so we can get your attendance and you'll get your credit and stuff. So first what we'll do, just kind of introductions of SOAB so you can understand the executive board. So my name is Lindsay Bartley. I'm the executive director. Will Sanders is our financial director. Peyton Hingen is our programming director. This went away. And Shreya is our. What did you say, Julie? We lost your screen. Yeah. Let's... PowerPoint. Okay. Am I back? Yes, you're back. Okay, cool. So our marketing director is Shreya Narapanini, and then of course, Julie Onimbo, our advisor. So that is our executive board. You can come in and see us for questions and things. So first, just a little overview, just to give like SOAB vision statement. So as an executive board, we will strive to establish the brand of SOAB by promoting the success of RSOs and student leaders while building a sense of diversity and inclusivity within SOAB and across U of L's campus. So that is what we stand by and every decision we make goes along with our vision statement. And then this is the Office of Student Involvement's mission statement. Student involvement fosters engagement in student-led programs and services that enrich the education experience by maximizing the capacity of students to learn, serve, and lead. So involvement, of course, is very important to us at SOAB, and obviously it is to you all. I'm glad that you're here. Thank you for being here. So even why are we here? Obviously you're here because you are an RSO leader, you're an officer for an RSO. So we are here to provide helpful information that will help you with that. Just a little introduction to SOAB. Maybe you have some questions about us or processes, and then also just communicate the responsibilities that you do have as an RSO officer. And if at any point anyone has questions, um, you can raise your hand or type them in the chat. Okay, so going to go into the re-registration process since that is coming up and just to go over what is RSO registration. So RSO registration allows you to be recognized by the university and that allows you to get resources from the university, reserve space on campuses for like meetings and events. All is existing student organizations have to re-register every year during your designated registration window and that window is based on your officer elections that you have set in your constitution and bylaws um, and during this window you can re-register your organization's engage portal attend this officer orientation we have one for every quadrant and request bank letters and everything um, we'll go over the quadrants in a second So just additional re-registration information to so your registration, as I mentioned, uh, will correspond to when your officers are elected. Please make sure that all the officer elections take place before the closing date. Pretty you know, self-explanatory, but if you're in that window, please try to get it completed in that window so you can remain standing and everything. Any organization that does not complete this by the end of their window will be moved to probationary status and your engage portal will be frozen. And so you want to avoid that, of course. So here are the registration windows. Actually, we are, of course, in the fall one. So the CPC deadline is coming up. It is the 15th of September, so it's the last day to apply for CPC funding. And then if you are awarded CPC funding, all requests will be finalized by the 23rd. So here's the rest of the fall windows. If you want to keep track of that, depending on when your elections are, of course. So these are the fall windows. Here are the spring windows. You can see those all in 2023. Leave that for a second.
Okay, so now we're going to move to officer orientations, or not orientations, transitions, <laughs> transitions, I'm sorry. So outgoing officers, this is very important. Um, outgoing officers, please share the requirements for staying in good standing with the incoming officers. Uh, it's very hard for your, your new officers to know everything, of course, coming into the position, so it's always good to do a transition with them. Tell incoming officers about your experiences, pros, cons, what went well, what limitations did you face, what would you have done differently? This can really help them for your organization for the next year. Discuss how exactly to navigate the various university offices and be sure to pass on information in important documents, all like account information, especially bank information. That's a big one. Um, and then also for the incoming officers, please work with your organization's outgoing officers to set goals for the coming year. So maybe what did they want to accomplish and maybe they didn't get the chance to and just take feedback from them. It can really help talking to previous and incoming officers. And then it's always important to, of course, update your organization's engage portal with the new officers that goes along with the re-registration. So like I said, you always want to do a little transition just to help the new officers coming in. Yes, Eli. Uh, uh, first off, are you able to hear me? Yes. OK, um, how do I uh, how do we know which uh, which uh, window that our org is in? Is it a is it like a self selection sort of thing? Yes. Um, and okay. and I I can answer this. Um, when whoever pre re registered your portal prior, if you go to the about section and engage, the very last question that was asked was when do you elect your officers? So the window you are placed in is whatever somebody had had told me that was when you changed your officers. It can change if you decide to change your officers. I have some groups that change them each semester. Um, you just need to let me know because uh, that way the blue button, the blue registration button will only open up if it's your time. So um, if you want, uh, you can let me know and I could tell you which one you're in. Um, but if it changes, I need to know that. But that's based upon you all when when do you according to your constitution or when do you traditionally change your officers i see uh is that a direct question or uh, uh or the very last question in your about section uh, and i'm going to go over engage later but it asks specifically when do you change your officers beginning of fall end of fall okay. beginning of spring end of spring those are the four quadrants OK, um, just just so I know who uh, who is it that's talking right now? Oh, I'm sorry. This is Julie. I'm the uh, assistant director of student involvement. Oh, OK. And that upkeeps everything. <laughs> All right, it, it's Julia Nembo. Yes, that is correct. OK, OK. Right. Awesome. That was a good question. That way everyone knows it is like a self selected thing based on what you put in engage. So kind of going to go over the RSO statuses. So what each three of them mean. Of course, good standing is the one that everyone wants. Your RSO has full rights and benefits, meaning like reserving spaces and things that we mentioned previously. So how exactly you're going to stay on good standing is, of course, have an active portal on Engage, annually, annually submit and update officer names and contact information, Update your constitution with appropriate causes and laws if necessary, and attend an officer orientation upon election of new officers. Um, all of that was kind of mentioned previously, but you just got to keep that up with registration and things to stay on good standing. So if your group is put on probation, that means that they have not met one of the above requirements. And what exactly does this mean? You cannot reserve space on campus for meetings or events. You cannot request CPC funding. And then, but it is simple to get off of probation. You simply fulfill the requirements that you're missing. Probably it's just one. And then you can con contact your consultant that is in your RSO category. 
And speaking of that, I will soon send out an email with everyone's RSO consultant. Um, we've been finalizing like office hour schedules and stuff, um, but I will send out on a listserv our contact information and everything. I, and so I then, do want to add something, Lindsay. Um, okay. They can get back in good standing, but if the window for your quadrant closes, you have to wait until the next one opens. OK, yes. so you can't just whenever you you feel like it update. No, it's all it's got to be within those windows. So like right now, there's some groups that are on probation from the spring that they had to wait until the window opened in August. Do you all understand? OK. okay. Sorry. So then the other option is inactive, and that is when you have been on probation for one academic year or more will automatically go in and put your organization on inactive status. So this revokes your SGA charter and reinstatement requires applying to be an RSO. There is a form on engage under SOAB's portal, um, the application for inactive to go back active. Um, it's not as extensive as a process as applying to be a new RSO on campus. So we've kind of touched on this, but why exactly would you want to stay in good standing? Of course, funding, CPC funding, free space reservations, like I've mentioned for meetings and events and things, discounted equipment charge, and we love this one, ability to apply for student awards. Okay, so going into that, I will let one of our CPC accountants kind of take over and he's going to go over the CPC process a little bit with you which is just one big reason why you want to stay in good standing. OK, so in order to receive CPC funding, you must open a bank account. And the first step in doing so is applying for an EIN number. So you're going to go to the IRS's website, um, click on apply for EIN online, um, apply online now, and then you're going to begin the application, view additional types, and then you're going to import personal information a little bit later. I'm going to give you a visual on the step by step process in that. Second, you're going to receive a letter from Julie stating that you are an official RSO um, in good standing. And then after that, you're going to submit the names of members and advisors who, have, who will have access to the bank account um, via the bank letter request. And the names much must match the names in, in portal, like the officer names in portal must match the ones on the bank letter. OK, so once you get to the IRS's website, you're going to again click on view additional types. And then community or volunteer group, and depending on what your organization falls under, whether it's political, um, social or savings club or some other nonprofit, um, you're going to click on one of those. So some bank account best practices, so um, it's best to use a local bank and especially one that's familiar with working with student organizations. Um, make sure you take obviously special care of your account's debit card. Um, in your organization's constitution, specify who's in charge of monitoring um, that bank account. And then again, or advisors may not be able or may not be the sole proprietors of an RSO bank account. Um, there needs to be an officer's name on it and then when transitioning transitioning account information, make sure you give the upcoming officers the organization's EIN number so you don't lose that, um, where to access necessary codes, and then um, where the bank statements are being sent. So how do RSOs get funding in general? One, obviously we have CPC funding um, that you can get through uh, making a budget request. Uh, we do not cover travel expenses. Um, that's something that's done through the SGA Senate, and you can access that through RSO finances on Engage. Um, third, obviously fundraising. Um, when you make a budget request, you're not guaranteed that money, so you may have to find other sources of fundraising that money. And then campus initiatives. Um, this is a new one, I believe, this year, and funding can be done through uh, Codre, I think, Lindsay, could you uh, help me out on this? I'm not sure um, where they go for funding on this. Yeah, and Julie might want to even go a little more in depth on that one if you don't care, Julie. 
Um, which which question? I'm sorry, I was answering one of the ones uh, <laughs> they were asking about class act. What was the question? I'm sorry. You're fine. Um, Just kind of explain CODRA a little more, the funding oh. for that. Yeah, CODRA, it's the Commission on Diversity and Racial Equality, and um, they do have funds for RSO for events, but the event must be of a cultural theme. Um, it isn't a whole lot of money. You might get 100 or $200, but it helps. You know, it may help you buy food. Um, but the, if you go to that link, um, and we we're, we can post this too on the uh, Engage page, so if you want to come back and get the link or contact me and I'll send it to you, um, the application is on there. But like I said, the event must be of a cultural theme. Okay, so it if you're wondering whether or not your RSO is eligible to apply, one, the RSO must be in good standing, um, as Lindsay was talking about earlier, um, must not have any outstanding balance from a previous funding. So that means you've returned your unused um, or submitted receipts and returned unused funds. Um, this is really important because if you don't do so, your RSO will go on probation. Um, your RSO must have access to that bank account. And then um, they must have a vendor number with the university um, and this takes time to process so make sure you do this um, beforehand for time to spare. OK, so um, some more best practices. Um, you RSOs cannot use a UVL Pro card, um, a tax exempt number, a nonprofit account or an or a uh, 501C status account. Um, mandatory if applying for funding. Again, they must have that EIN number, which you get through the IRS's website. Um, open an account for the RSO and then turn in a W-9 and vendor survey. And then if awarded or the requested funds, um, the contact person completes a form to request the check. Allow 30 days to receive the disbursement check. So that means um, it's going to take a while for you to actually get your money and then if your group makes between 5,000 and 50,000, um, you must submit a 990N tax form. Okay, so the process for CPC funding, um, if you go to engage, go to your organization under finance, there's gonna be a budget request um, button. Once you click on that, you can make a budget request for funding. If approved, um, request the check through engage in the award agreement form. And then once your event is complete, um, you'll be sent a CPC ev event evaluation and then um, also a form to submit your receipts. Again, this is crucial um, for your RSO to stay on good standing and then the application is complete. Okay, so then going from there, after you have your application and everything and you have your money for your event, so now it's time to advertise your events. That's a big thing we've seen is just getting the word out there for events. So obviously use Engage. You always want to make uh, an Engage event for your event so people can see that on Engage. They can RSVP. It's also just as important for tracking attendance and things, which we'll mention later. Uh, flyers. So the SAC policy for flyers, because you do have to be wary of that. Submit flyers to the front desk and someone will stamp and post them for you. So don't just go put up your own flyers in the sack and things. Um, as mentioned, please don't just post them in bathrooms or on doors or windows. For washable sidewalk chalk, it may be used only on uncovered flat horizontal surfaces. <laughs> Sidewalks. Um, industrial chalk is prohibited, so just make sure it's the classic like Crayola washable sidewalk chalk. Then yard signs, be sure to send an email to the Office of Student Involvement indicating the information content of the yard signs and when they will be taken down just so they can know. And there's some more yard sign stuff that we'll touch on later. And then digital slides, student news and events, they can go on the um, TVs that, that they have things rolling in the sack and things. Uh, so there's the dimensions for the digital slides. And a little note, the Office of Housing and Residence Life has requested that there will be no chalking or yard signs within 50 feet of a residence hall entrance. Uh, that's what I was going to kind of touch on for the yard signs, but that's for mainly chalking and things. Uh, yes, if you had your hand raised, please. OK, 
Can you hear me now? Yes. Hey, okay, everyone. So does that I'm, include Hardware Matt? Show. I'm here with Matt Safford, one of our um, Does that include editors. the walkway to the set, like the little ramp all about that's not allowed? I didn't hear what you said. The on the ramp, the the ramp to the sack is this that is that not allowed for chalk or you can chalk on the ramp. You just can't chalk under the ramp. Okay. It's got to be somewhere where the rain can wash away the chalk. So any overhang like under the ramp or under the build like the sack has very uh, high building eaves. Um, so you need to have it where the the rain can wash it away. Okay. Okay, so just a little bit more on yard signs. As we mentioned, yard signs could should contain the name of the organization sponsoring an activity or an event, as well as the date. Obviously, just put all the information they would need on there. Any yard sign without a date should be up for no more than 30 days, of course. And yard signs should be placed in mulch beds or mulch rings, not just in the grass. People spend time on that grass, so let's keep it nice. And yard signs must be removed within five business days of the conclusion of the activity. Um, so annotating a map of campus when placing yard signs can help to ensure that all signs are removed in a timely manner. Just remember where you put them. That way you can go sweep them up really easily. And if they are not, then the groundskeepers will take them and dispose of them. So if it's something that maybe you would want back, Make sure you go and get it. OK, so then just a little bit more on like events, meetings, activities. This is kind of the just what you should do as an RSO officer. So always arrive to your events on time and meetings, everything. Make sure that you have everything that you need for your events. It's easy to forget about the little things such as even like napkins, cups. So just really try to go through and make sure you're well prepared. Make sure all the garbage is cleaned up and disposed of anywhere that you or your organization has been. And return all borrowed furniture to the place location from where it was borrowed. If it was like red barn or sack, just make sure it gets back to where it's supposed to be or you inform who you're supposed to. Um, what you're not supposed to do at meetings and events is use glitter. Of course, that can get very messy. Um, table decorations that make it very difficult to vacuum at the end of the day. So things with like, I don't know, feathers on it. Um, please don't use any candles, tea lights or any open flames. It is against the law to do so in state and federal buildings. So with the same way we weren't allowed to do it freshman year in the dorms, you can't do it for your events either. Right, okay. and then here's some like you got to go to these. If you're an RSO leader, these are really cool. These are all the RSO expos at New Cards Orientation, which have already happened, but we love those. RSO fairs, there's plenty of RSO workshops and things. Homecoming, university-wide events, those are really fun and also just a good time to like network when you wouldn't expect it. Um, student awards and our You'd be surprised how you can recruit out there. And then for making reservations for your said meetings or events, you'll do all of that on the website called 25 Live. Um, and so that's for reservations of the SAC, Red Barn, the West Plaza outside the SAC, Humanities Quad, and any classrooms for meetings and things. Um, reservations are only allowed to be made by two student representatives per organization. So the president or just main RSO leader and then one other officer that the president has delegated as officer number two. So you can see it has various titles, but just whoever is officer number one and two in engage are the only two people that are allowed to request spaces. And so a little bit more. Uh, reservations must be made within two business days of the event. Reservations are made Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. That's the only requesting you can do. 
and for events reservations oh that's for meetings i'm sorry for events reservations must be made at least three weeks in advance so of course those are much bigger um, you're probably renting bigger rooms like the sack ballroom you're going to need a little bit more time for that if you do decide to cancel your meeting or event please cancel the reservation as well um, someone else could use that room or the uh, red barn office like won't go set it up or something if it's not necessary and if you do not you will be held financially responsible and so now julie is going to go over some engaged things for us Okay, I'm going to show you the slides first and then I'm going to actually go into Engage to uh, show you live um, how to utilize it. Um, one thing this year Engage did was they changed their interface, so a lot of things might look a little different if you've been on Engage for a while. Um, so if you look at first the top left, the arrow where it says navigation tabs, there's uh, three lines and a little arrow, and that kind of moves that, um, it's like a menu in and out. So if you want it closed, you can close it, and if you open it up, that way you can see all the different things in that menu. Um, all of your organizations are gonna be listed on the side that you are a member of for easy access. Uh, your events have been moved up front and center, so if there's something going on that you uh, had signed up for or something that's, part of, of, of um, an organization that you're part of, your events are gonna pull up uh, on top and then you can click on the button to view more. Um, your event pass, uh, that is what you use when you're signing into events. It's something that you'll find, um, it's like a QR code that's only for you. This will last you from when you come in as a freshman till you graduate. If you continue on in our graduate or professional schools, that event pass will also stay with you. And what it does is it keeps track of all the different things that you're involved in. And if you look down a little on that menu, you'll see a co-curricular transcript. It does track uh, everything in that co-curricular transcript. So you'll be able to go back uh, after four years and say, oh, I attended this and I was a member of that. So um, it really keeps it uh, track of things. Um, your user profile icon um, is something that if you, because uh, I get a lot of calls from students that say, well, we go on our portal and none of our officers are showing up. That's because there's a privacy setting. That's if you click on your picture or your account, uh, you have to physically go in and say, yes, I want to be shown on this account or no, I want to be hidden. Um, until you put show, your officers are not going to show up on your page. It's not something I can do. It's not something you as officers can do. It's something that's personal to every individual that's on Engage. So um, that's something you may want to uh, tell your members if you want to have your members show. Um, it also has uh, a submission. So a lot of times people say, oh, I submitted that form and I said I didn't get it. And that means they didn't hit the final button. So if you're ever sending in a form or a document, check through your submission tab and make sure that it says pending. If it still says in process, that means that you have not submitted it. And unfortunately, a lot of groups lost out on some things last year because they didn't fully submit their forms. Um, there's also ways to check in events um, and organization registrations through that uh, tab. Um, again, with the uh, transcript, you can self-report your experiences. So if you do community service off campus and you want to add this to your transcript, you can do that as well. Um, one way to track, well, there's different ways to uh, track attendance. Now, this is something I'm really asking all of you to do because I, at the end of the year, I am been asked to submit a report of who's attending our RSO events. We want to check and see what students are coming, what students aren't coming, to see if there's any kind of patterns of students that we need to make sure that we are reaching out to. Uh, we don't want to lose anybody in the cracks, and we really want to see um, you know how well our RSOs are doing. So uh, you all do great events. You all have um, 
lots of stuff going on. I want to start reporting that. So uh, if you see this little uh, symbol here, there is a app that you can add to your phone that's called Campus Labs Event Check-in app. And when you scan the, you can scan your event pass through that. It's very easy. Or you, you can search if they're from the University of Louisville, you can uh, type in their name and it's automatically going to pull it up. It takes two seconds to sign people in. And especially if you're coming from an organization that has, you know, 100 members and you have to do roll call, it's very easy to have people just come in and click in on the event pass. Again, it's very easy to take attendance at your meetings. You don't have to sit there and call names the whole time. Um, through Engage, you can also swipe. We have swipers that are available if you'd like to borrow one. So you can swipe uh, student ID cards in if you choose to do that. There's also a way that you can put in a student's email address or their student ID number. If they don't happen to have a phone or their phone's dead or they left their phone and their ID card, you can still, uh, through your laptop, sign them in. Um, just with anything in Engage, if you're typing in an email, please make sure you're using the ULink email. So in my case, you're not going to put in Julia.onembo. You're going to put in J-A-O-N-N-E-0-1. That is the only email that Engage recognizes because that's what you use to sign into it. So a lot of times, too, if you're putting somebody's name and they're saying they didn't get the email, that means you didn't put the right email. And then finally, there's uh, something new to engage this year, which you can print out a QR code. If you've come to any of our RSO events, especially like the RSO fair, we've had QR codes around campus or around the event. Um, you just the individual just takes their phone and clicks on it and they automatically get signed into the event. So it's very easy to track attendance at your events. So this is um, what an event page looks like and if you see the arrow where it says view qr code that's what you click on and boom it pops up you save it in a word document print it out and it's easy peasy to do uh, this, this is where you go for the swiper so you're going to uh, hook the swiper up and click on that link and it takes you right to the swiper page you can go next uh, this is where you put in uh, the people's emails. Uh, you can put in as many emails as you want, but I recommend that you do at about maybe five or six before you add them um, because one time I had typed in 10 names and I lost them all. So try to do it in small in ex excerpts of putting things in. Um, if you have guests who are not from the university and not in Engage, but you still want to keep track of them, or if you want to later send and invite them to maybe something else you do, you can also put an outside of uh, email. And then also the card ID number, like I said, you can sign in using uh, their student ID number. Uh, if, if you um, have an event that's on Zoom, you can also upload uh, a Zoom uh, list or if you happen to take attendance some other way and you have it in a, in, uh, in like an Excel sheet using again the ULink ID and password, you can file upload under default and it can also uh, upload the information that way as well. OK, with updating your Engage portal, make sure that your organization's officer information is up to date because that's what I use when I send information out. Um, so if you are not up to date and especially if you're an officer, if you're the president, you need to be identified as the president. If you're the treasurer, you need to be identified as the uh, financial officer because in, in the case of CPC, only the president and the financial officer are the only two that can actually go in and see the applications. Um, have your members join your organization's portal uh, so that if I get a call and saying, hey, I need access to something, you need to be a member before I can give you access. Um, your Engage page is like a web page, so you can post pictures, your accolades, anything that you may post on a web page you can put in Engage and you can send out the link uh, for your, your page as you would a link to a web page. Um, and it's free. You don't have to pay for an outside web, web page account. 
And then finally, um, there is a little red circle that'll pop up if somebody's trying to join your organization. Please go in and accept requests or if you are a Greek organization or an honors organization where you have a special intake process, we ask that you still uh, send something back to those students explaining your intake. But um, my, my main thing that has always been is that I want every student that comes to UofL to feel like they belong. And I don't want a student to come and try to join something and nobody responds. So please, please make sure you're going to your rosters and you're looking for that little red circle. If there's usually there's numbers in there, but go in. You don't have to accept everybody, but at least respond back to the folks just so that they're not sitting there waiting for an invitation that nobody's going to send. I see a hand. I don't know where it's coming from, though. Uh, hi, this is Riyadh. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, this is Riyadh I from the Student Association. So about um, members joining the Engage portal, uh, we have around 60 to 70 members. I have uh, invited a lot of members through the Engage portal. They received an email, okay. but that, that email did not contain any link to join. So they have to go manually again and request for membership. Oh, okay, again, were you using their Ulink email? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, it should it should have, if they received the email, it should have something that they could click on that automatically accepts them. But um, if you can, uh, I, I'm actually out of town. I'm in New Jersey right now, uh, but I'll be back on Tuesday. But if you want to come up and see me and show me some of the emails and that way we can try to figure it out what's going on. OK, great. And I, I will come to you and discuss this. One. Thank you. Sounds great. Thank you. OK, um, before Wait. we go to questions, let, oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, were you wanting to go through engage first? Yeah, I just need you to um, stop sharing. Uh, un <laughs> yeah. yeah. Unshare. <laughs> All right. Okay. These are the times I, I miss my dual screens. Yeah, I'm lucky today. Okay. It's still showing. Um, and also for the people that have mentioned, if you can get this later, we have been recording it and we will post it on like our Engage page, SOAB website. So you definitely will be able to access this later. Okay. Can you see my Engage? I can't I can't see what it's yes. showing. Do you see my page page? Do you yes. see the whole page? Yes. All right. Yay. OK, <laughs> so uh, this is going to be really brief. Uh, if you want more information about Engage, I would be very happy to meet with you. Uh, there's a lot of things that Engage does that um, you could use for your organizations. It's just I don't want to be here for two hours. So again, this is the toggle button that opens and closes this drop down. So of these, uh, these clicks here, um, the one I want to point out is forms. A lot of times uh, everything we, we do in Engage is through forms. So there is an online ORSO officer orientation, whereas we're going to put this orientation onto this, um, onto this form. Um, but this is only going to be open until the windows open. These are for groups that were on probation that missed the or office orientation. So there's another way that they can go in and still get back into good standing. The bank letter request form is what I need if you are needing to go to the bank to change your officers. This is where the form is. This is, uh, oops, the application, as Lindsay talked about, if your RSO goes inactive, you can reply for RSO status. Um, the Senate Special Project Funds just was announced, so this is the application if you want to apply for special projects and the travel. Uh, travel is for undergrads or professional students. If you're a graduate student, you need to go to the Graduate uh, Student Council. Um, 
Then the Senate special project is for events that happen for the first time. It's not for equipment. It's and then if it's in between the uh, CPC uh, deadlines, you can still apply for some funding if something should come up. Um, some of the other applications there are scholarships that are on here and the uh, when we have the student awards, as Lindsay talked about earlier, they will be under these forms. So this is a really good uh, link that you should check regularly. Um, also, here's where, like I said, your organizations are. Um, so if you click on this end here, this is going to take you to the explore mode. So what you're looking at is what anybody who's going on engaged that's not a member of your organization, this is what they see. So if you want to see what others um, are looking at when they go to your page, so you can go back and forth. Here we have our officers, we have our forms, we have our events. Um, this is what you should be doing with your portals. If you want to go to the inner workings of your portal, then you click on the little gear part. And this can take you to your roster. And I know we have people waiting. I haven't. So see, this is the two people that I said I want you to look for that red dot to go in and accept your memberships. You can manage positions. So if you have different positions than just the normal uh, president, vice president, secretary and treasurer, if you have coordinators or something, you can manage your own positions and you can toggle and add and take them out just clicking on that little button here. Uh, the other thing I want to show you is going to your portal is the finance. Now this is where the application is for CPC. So if you go to create request and go to create budget request, you're going to see the 2022-2023 CPC. You won't see ELSB. I just see it because I have access to everything. But this is where the application is. And remember, it's only the president and only the financial officer that are identified in your portal who can actually go in and see this. And the reason we do that is so that we don't have a million submissions from different people and that the president and the treasurer always knows what is being asked for. So again, you go to your finance, finance, and create request, create, but oops, nope, sorry, I hit the wrong thing. Create budget request, and boom, there is CPC. And like I said, if you have any other questions about CPC, let me know. Those are the main things um, that you would need to know about it. Um, again, latest news. And then here's some campus links. If you don't know how to get to 25 Live, here's a direct link to it. Here's a link to our website. We have a lot of um, walkthroughs and videos on there as well uh, for you to be able to utilize. OK, I'm going to stop unsharing my screen. bring mine back because it has all of our contact information and stuff so you all can see that. OK, so we will open it up for if anyone has questions in anything. Uh, also, just make sure that you have signed in so we can track your attendance and you will get credit. So if anyone has questions, uh, please raise your hand first. Yep, Naya, you can go. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Um, I wanted to ask, since I had the opportunity, um, for, I, I'll be honest, I don't fully know the process for like changing the name. Uh, I just know, you know the process that was told so far. But um, beyond the Constitution, changing the Constitution, uh, the name in the Constitution, do I, is it just a verbal confirmation so we can carry on with that? Or should we, is this, or is it? Is this a says? Yes, this is Naya from a yeah. says. Yeah, um, for you guys, because we've already talked about this, I need uh, an updated Constitution 
with the new name, but for the rest of you, you just can't change your name of your organization, especially if it's tied to an EIN number or an outside bank account. This group uh, had not had a bank account, so it was okay. So just know that if you're ever wanting to change your name, we need an updated constitution, and we also need to for you to uh, change it through the IRS first before you change it with us. So, um if the updated constitution is good, then we can carry on with the name change. Yes, you need to send that to Lindsay. Perfect. They they have Julie. I'll send it to you and stuff. OK. So what okay. you're going to do is you're going to re-register your portal and you're going to change the name that way. Sweet. Thank you so much. If you need me, to, if you need me to reopen your portal for registration, send me an email and I'll do so. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Julie. Hey Julie, I to clarify yeah, yeah. one more time. So for some of our um, RSOs, specifically in the medical division, um, if we completed registration back in April, we do not need to register again until the following April no. when we have leadership transition, correct? No, that is correct. That's it's goes back to the quadrants. So you're gonna you're gonna re-register your portal when you change your officers. Now, if your officers change at some point in the middle of the year, just let me know, and I can uh, reopen your re-registration form uh, because you can go on and you can change it on your portal. But I'd never know. It isn't until you re-register that it shoots me an email that says a change has been made. So um, that's why you, you need to let me know if you're changing anything. Um, and, and then that way, when, when you re-register, that's how Engage locks the information into the system. So you can go back or your, your future members can go back and it'll lock in there who was president and what years they were. Great, thank you. Did that answer your question? It did. Um, I was just also wondering if I stay on till the end of the call, there was just something specific that I wanted to ask you um, if that would yeah. be OK. Yeah, great. thank you. And just know too, uh, I don't know if you attended uh, a meeting because we had the med school meeting in April. You don't have to keep coming to these. You only have to go once per year. OK, great. Yeah, that was my other question because I think a lot <laughs> of us are here thinking we had yeah. to go every time. No, 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 that's that's why we went to Quadrant so that when you're done in April, you don't have to worry about it again till next March. Great, thank you. Hey, um, Hannah, see so you have your hand raised. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Hi. Um, so I was wondering. So we registered literally in May, just before like everything was, you know, closed up, and I'm on this meeting to like be recognized. And like don't be you know suspended or anything but if we have not changed anything since then i think you answered the question before me and it was pretty much the same uh, uh, question but do we need to do like anything on engage again like form or anything well what group are you uh carcelin oh you're new yeah no you you well because you knew you might have to re-register um, because uh, your your portal came in new and there's other things that you do during the re-registration process that um, that you would have to do that you can only do when you re-register. So is do you see a blue button that says re-register this organization? Uh, blue button where exactly? Sorry. OK, uh, now did did you say you did re-register in the fall? or in the spring? So we registered like a, as a new RSO okay. in spring. So Let I'm on see. the engage right now, so I can look for a blue button only if you see, uh, if you tell me where. But if it's at the bell and then the button, there's only like red, red. All right. Button. Remember when I showed you to go to the gear? On the on the left hand side, yes. find your organization and click on the gear. Go to where it says uh, home, I think it's organization home or something home. Yeah, home. OK, do you see a blue button? No. OK, then you probably don't need to, but um, follow up with me on Tuesday 
when I'm when I'm back and then we'll we'll make sure you're OK. I just I just have to go into your thing to make sure everything's good. OK, perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other questions? Yes, they're asking Eli. if there's a way. Go ahead. Sorry. Eli, if you have a question. Yeah. Um, I guess let's ask us. Uh in regards to elections, if if uh if uh, there is an election going on that is after the uh the here, let me see what it what I wrote it down as. Uh that was after the um 16th, but before the. Uh, or actually. All right, no, I'll, I'll I, explain. I, I don't have a question. <laughs> Never mind. OK, well, just to kind of to talk about that on the 16th, anybody that did not re-register the, their portal, the registration process is going to shut down and then you have one more week to finish anything that you didn't take care of. So this is the time that if you need to change your officers and you need a bank letter, I need to get the bank letter request by the following week. Uh, if you did not, or if you're, there's students that didn't attend this officer orientation and they need to do the one that's online, um, I need to have all of this done by that date. That's when everything shuts down because it takes me a while, even though I've been up doing it as we're going along, but it takes me a while to have to update everything. And that's why I give myself a couple weeks in between so I can get other stuff done, because when we're in the re-registration process, it's very con time consuming. So, um, so the 16th is when all the re-registrations have to be done. Again, looking for that blue button that says re-register this organization. If you don't see the blue button and you think you need to re-register, send me an email. If you see a blue button, that means you have to re-register. Um, get that done by next Friday. And then the Friday after is when all bank letters and all offer, officer orientations have to be done. OK. And that's when? OK, the 16th, which is next Friday, is when the re-registrations okay. have to be done. The following Friday, which I don't have a calendar in front of me, it's is September when the 23rd. bank letter. OK, the 23rd, sorry, <laughs> is when all the other information has to be in. So if you need a bank letter to change your officers, I need it all submitted because that form also will close on the 23rd. OK. OK. I see the questions in the chat uh, right away to rewatch this. Yes, it will be posted. Um, we have right now the old officer orientation up, so that will this one will take place of that. It'll be like on the SOAB website and engage page. Or if you ever just need help, send an email to me or Julie and we can send it to you. Um, and then also about hidden members. So I'm pretty sure Julie, correct me if I'm wrong. You can't see who's hidden. It would just be that member has to go in on their personal settings and show yes. themselves as a member. So you'd have yes. to kind of ask everyone in your organization like, hey, make sure you've done this, please, if you wish to. Yes, yeah, it's under the privacy settings. If they go into their accounts again, that's in the top right where there's the little circle that either has a picture or their initial and it'll say account settings. If they go in there and go to privacy settings and scroll down, it's going to list all the organizations that they're a member of. So right now it's probably pink and that's a default setting and you're going to see either show or hide and each individual determines. Yes, I want to be seen on my page. No, I do not want to be seen on my page and that's up to the individual. We can't force them to. Um, but we also have I have no way of updating that and neither do you. So it's just if you want your members or if your members want to be seen on that front page, like when I showed our front page had all of our officers listed, um, the person needs to individually go in and do that. Anyone else have any questions? Hello. Yep. 
Um, I'm so sorry. I wrote it down on my um, calendar wrong and thought the meeting was at six. So is there anything I need to do to like sign in or anything? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Just you're fine. Um, you're probably have to, to watch it. Yeah. OK, yeah, if you can type your like name and the organization that you're with just in the chat real quick um, and then you can go back and watch it when it's posted. And if you have any questions about anything in it, just send me an email. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. I wanted to just take the opportunity. Uh, <laughs> uh, Lindsay, did you get to see the Constitution? Or uh, I'm going to look at it in a, after our meeting. Awesome. Perfect. I just wanted to I just wanted to ask so that I know what I can do after this. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. OK, any other questions before we get moving here? Your questions are all very good, very good questions. OK, so just the last little slide, just kind of contact information for all of the executive board of SOAB. Please reach out to us uh, with any questions like we're here to help you all help any of your members with anything. Um, so you can kind of break apart which question goes to who, of course, or just send one to me and I can delegate it from there. Okay, so uh, like I've mentioned, this will be posted and everything. I really, really, really appreciate all of you coming and especially the ones that like stuck around for questions and things. Uh, very good questions and probably someone else had the question. Um, so yeah, this will be posted. Thank you all so much. If you ever have questions of anything, send me or Julie an email. And thank you all so much.